I turned the lathe on and I brought the tool up until it scratched the work. Then I zeroed out the cross slide, or the cross, cross feed collar, and I also zeroed out my uh, indicator. Now I'm ready to take the first cut. The first cut is about ten thousandths and you'll see it scratch as I turn it on. I'm not sure you can hear me over the roar of this machine and I'll be catching the thread uh, chasing dial on uh, any number or any line. Back gears, slow speed. Watching that dial indicator. Remember, my depth is 54 thousandths. initially but as you get deeper the, the uh, cuts need to be uh, less deep. And now I'll skip ahead. And I'm almost down to depth. to take several passes uh, without increasing the depth of cut to clean it up. The job is half done. And that's what it looks like, a real wide thread, but of course we're going to cut another thread in between it. Now in order to do that, we have to move our tool down half of the lead. And if you remember, that was uh, 84 thousandths. And there's more than one way to do that, but let me uh, remember that I'm holding this in a chuck and then I'm supporting the other end with a center. Some of you may be holding your work between centers. If you were holding your work between centers, as I'm going to talk about right now, you would not have to do what I'm going to show you here in a minute as with the dial indicator, but theoretically, if the work was held like this with the tail in one of the slots, all you would have to do is to take the work out and rotate it 180 degrees for a two start thread, a double thread. If it was a, uh, a quadruple, quadruple thread, you, you'd move it 90 degrees. But the reality is here, these slots were not machined, they were cast, and you cannot truly count on them being 180 degrees apart or 90 degrees apart. And the same thing is true with this other drive plate. You can even see here the rough uh, casting marks. So that will not work. It may work. There's a possibility that it will work, but you really don't want to chance it. And some would say, well, just catch it on uh, opposite number. Well, that isn't really going to work. That might possibly work if you have, uh, from what I read, odd number of threads, but... Uh, you will need to experiment with that. I, I can't really advise you on that, but you may not want to chance it. I'm going to continue the way I did and move the uh, uh, compound in that distance, which was uh, 84 thousandths. 
This is a Logan lathe, not the one I'm currently using, but if you have a Logan or a South Bend, there is uh, some gearing that can be changed that will give you that 180 degrees that we talked about, the stud gears, but look that up and study that before you do it. We cannot, or I cannot do that on the closing lathe be, or any type of gear-headed lathe. And the, the gears on the uh, closing are not conducive to doing uh, what I'm trying to explain here. Earlier during the setup I told you to make sure that you had this on zero and that lost motion had been taken up. In other words you had moved it in a little bit, zeroed it out, make sure you have a little extra travel available. You're not at the end of your travel because remember we need to move it 84 thousandths. And if you're not going to use the dial indicator method at this time, advance it 84 thousandths. I prefer to use the indicator on here. It's a magnetic base and I have it zeroed out and I'll move it 84 thousandths toward the headstock. That is done. I can take the indicator off and I'm ready to start the second cut. Here I go with the second thread, and if I have done everything correctly, the new thread will be right in the red, halfway between the other two threads. Cross your fingers. And it looks like I'm right on. using that uh, indicator. See how fast it is? so on until I'm into my depth, which again is 54 thousandths. Alright, this is my last pass, and then I'm going to try that nut. Here's the brass nut. Cross your fingers. There it goes. Just a little tight. I'm going to take a couple more uh, passes. It's, it's starting to go on, but uh, just needs a little cleanup. I took several more passes without increasing uh, the depth and goes on quite nicely now. Notice how quickly it advances in one turn. And this is what the tool looked like. It's an Aloris pre-ground tool, 60 degree. If you are uh, cutting one with a, with a great lead, you may need to grind a tool that has extra side clearance on it. Now here's an alternative way of uh, setting this up for multiple threads for uh, evens, numbers 2 or 4 start, and that's with the compound back at 29 degrees, and in just a minute I'm going to tell you why this is more advantageous to have it at 29 rather than a plunge cut, but you need to make yourself a center, and this can be made of soft steel, and the dimensions are going to vary a little bit depending on your chucks and your machine. But I have taken a three-quarter inch soft steel, about two inches long, and I turned a uh, 
60 degree taper on here by the compound rest method and this is turned down any old diameter but you do want to step here a shoulder so that can be put into the jaws up against the shoulder so it can't get pushed back if it would get pushed back a little bit that would throw off your timing or your location so make one of these and then uh, after it is in the chuck whether it be a three jaw or four jaw you need to take a light cut to true it back up unless of course you want to take the time to to set it up in the four jaw chuck within a half a thousandth or so which you can but in a three jaw chuck more than likely uh, your chuck is off and you need to take a truing cut on this just a just enough to bring it back into conformity and do not take it out of the jaws then until the job is done now here's how I'm going to set this up for a two start or a four start thread and in this case a two and I've numbered uh, the jaws this is one and two and I've installed that center that I just talked about up to the shoulder and then I took a very light cut on it so it's true it's truly 60 degrees and uh, now I have mounted my work between centers or it's going to be mounted between centers so I've got to lay the dog on it and I hope you're following what I'm going through here because I uh, I'm not real sure if I'm explaining it properly, but now I'm using the four jaw chuck as if it was a four slot accurate uh, drive plate or dog plate and putting the work in between centers now and bring it up against number one and I would go ahead and cut that first thread as shown earlier and after that's complete to our satisfaction then it can be taken out but do not change anything else on the setup but it can be taken out rotated and put into position here to cut the second thread and the dog tail must be up against the jaw it will quickly assume that uh, that position anyway as you start to cut but make sure you're up against that so you don't get a false start and a bad thread at the beginning but there is what I think is a good alternative to uh, the first method that I showed you earlier where I had to move the tool the uh, half of the lead in this direction using a dial indicator and it necessitated of course having the compound set at uh, 90 degrees rather than the 29. Is that clear as mud? Next, should you be required to uh, cut a four start thread, and I've numbered the jaws one, two, three, and four, you would cut your first thread here with the dog up against number one. When that is complete, rotate the work down and cut number two to completion and then move it to number three and then to number four and do not take this center out of that chuck until the entire job is done because you are uh, going to uh, probably get it out of whack just a little bit and it needs to be right on that's why we took that finishing cut that is important to remember so in this series I've showed you how to set it up for a two start and a four start and then uh, in the next little clip a three start and we'll do the same thing only with a three jaw chuck rather than a four jaw chuck and here's a possible setup for a three start thread and again we're back to the 29 degree compound which I prefer and then using the center that I just showed you a, a little while ago in the last clip and you need to take a truing cut on it unless you have an absolute perfect three jaw chuck and very few of them are and this would allow you to index it very accurately for three threads that would be one down there for two and over there for your third uh, start thread so in essence I'm using the three jaw chalk as if it was a uh, 
drive plate that had three equally spaced slots because I believe we can assume that this surface on the jaw here and the corresponding ones on the other two jaws would be very accurately spaced for three threads. This is the page out of the South Bend How to Run a Lathe book on cutting multiple screw threads. They don't have a whole lot to say about that but uh, go ahead and read through that and uh, you can pause your video in order to do that and there's just one paragraph here below it as well. Most of you probably already own this book. I may be getting off topic here a little bit but when I talk about plunge cutting for uh, threading by the first method that I showed you with the compound set at 90 degrees I'm feeding in straight in other words plunging like this straight so the tool is cutting on both sides that is not the way I like to do it and that is not the way that most uh, books recommend but when we feed at, at 29 degrees the tool is advancing like this a little bit at a time and always cutting on this edge only and that is the reason for setting the compound at 29 some say 29 and a half some authorities say 30 degrees that is all arguable but that is plunge cutting as opposed to feeding at an angle with the compound hope that clears that up just a little bit and there it is men a double thread a two start thread there's the original brass one If it's a three start or a four start, uh, you just have uh, extra steps, extra cuts to make. Because we just made two threads here, but with a three, you'd have uh, th your three threads. With a quadruple uh, start th thread, you're going to need uh, to make four threads side by side. I hope this uh, was interesting for you that uh, might do this someday or might take the mystery out of this for those of you that have no intention of ever doing it. This is Tupel Kane saying so long for now.